The Amazon rainforest is one of the world's greatest natural resources, both in terms of the resources it contains and its role in producing oxygen and cleaning the world's air. The forest stores up to 120 billion metric tons of carbon, equivalent to nearly 12 years of global emissions at current rates. If we try to get rid of this rainforest, most of the carbon will go into the atmosphere, and it seems that this process has already begun. Massive deforestation has been taking place in the world's largest rainforest over the past few decades. Scientists believe that since 17% of the forest has already been lost, the tipping point will be reached with 20-25% to deforestation. What caused the largest deforestation in the world? And who is responsible for this? Let's find out! The Amazonian forests recently celebrated their 10 millionth anniversary. During this time, the colossal river basin has become home to many species of animals and plants. There are about 400 billion trees alone, and scientists discover previously unseen representatives of the fauna every four days. 5.5 million square kilometers of forests are located on the territory of nine states at once – Brazil, Peru, Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, Bolivia, Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana. Logically, the logging industry exists everywhere, but forest losses in the Brazilian part of the Amazon, which accounts for about 60% of the total forest cover, can simply impress. Local residents, despite global warming, systematically support the processes of the death of Havea by large-scale cutting, the control of which exists purely nominally. Havea loses over 150 acres every minute. Experts warn that a violation of the water cycle will certainly lead to a decrease in precipitation and provoke a drought, which it would seem is completely unimaginable in these latitudes. Why then does humanity shoot itself in the foot by destroying the forest? It all started in 1964 during this onset of the Golden Age. Power has been seized by a military junta that actually did many wonderful things. Thanks to them, poor peasants have power lines, a network of roads and military bases. The population grew quickly from 115,000 to 1.1 million. Jobs were plentiful as new mines and farms grew by leaps and bounds. Such growth was a miracle. Propagandists trumpeted from all screens, promising eternal prosperity and a bright future for their country to everyone who started conquering the virgin forest. Already 12 years after the military came to power, the Trans-Amazon Highway was opened, connecting Brazil, Colombia, Peru, and Ecuador. Sure thing, the peasants, having decided that a lucky ticket fell into their hands, rushed towards their own happiness and trouble for posterity. Population growth in the country has necessitated making quick and rash decisions because the more people live on Earth, the more they need livelihood, industrial facilities, and most importantly, fields for growing crops and raising livestock. The Green Sea, of course, interferes with all this. Since the junta and with all the local peasants had a very vague idea of how to competently distribute the land, master economic flows, and take them under control, they simply used and still use the slash and burn method. In simple words, the forest turns into a field through a controlled fire on several hectares of territory. Such a method is simple and affordable, but disastrous for the local flora and fauna. Not only is it the destruction of all life in a particular area, but there is also no reason for the peasants not to let the fire burn down a hectare or two as there will be more fields. In five decades of people being brainwashed by the media, sawmills, mines, soy farms and pastures have occurred on the fringes of a vanishing forest. Thus, the first cause of the death of the rainforest was massive colonization provoked by the thirst for rapid economic and social growth with absolutely illiterate management of this process. The second death sentence for the Amazon has been made by its own fauna. Even though the law has long required that every farmer keep at least 80% of the forest on their lands, the locals are still happy to put palm trees under the axe and fire, because only empty land can feed them. Through the mangrove and palm forests full of predators, insects, and other dangers, the herds will not pass. Yes, cattle today have become the quantitatively dominant species in Havea. 
This was influenced by a huge number of factors, and one of them was colonization. Initially, the coastal and southern regions of Brazil were chosen for pastures, but the migration of the population under the influence of the Virgin Lands Development Policy provoked the movement of such regions deep into the Amazon. Today, Brazil earns more than $5.5 billion a year from the sale of beef. Converting this into more concrete figures, the flow of cattle going to slaughter comes from 2,800 municipalities, after which it goes to 152 export slaughterhouses. Meat goes to 152 importing countries. Rondonia, Mato Grosso, Sao Paulo, and Mato Grosso do Sul are the largest contributors, accounting for nearly 60% of beef exports. The product is in demand in Africa and Asia. China, for example, takes 30% of all meat for itself, while Egypt, 12.4%, and Russia, 10.4%, take the second and third places. The volume of purchases in other countries is low due to international and national legislation. De jour, several exporting-importing companies have committed to zero or deforestation in accordance with the laws. And more than 100 slaughterhouses have supported these commitments. Legislative norms, sure thing, very strict and fair, literally stimulated the creation of an extensive corruption scheme. For instance, farmer Jorge, who is obliged to preserve 80% of the forest on his land, cannot legally sell his livestock due to an embargo imposed by the government. So Jorge sells it to an intermediary at a discount, and they already transport it to some large slaughterhouse, for example, Frigon. They turn a blind eye to the origin of meat, a ton less or a ton more will not matter. And then the meat goes to a country where they also turn a blind eye to the legality of its origin and where the law is primarily on the side of the one who offers more money. Can you imagine how much land pastoralists need if a large slaughterhouse sends an average of one cow to the next world every 10 to 15 seconds and exports more than 10,000 tons of meat per year? Add in forests burned for soybean fields, the Amazon exports 15 million tons of soybeans annually. And you will understand that no fine will stop someone who is involved in this business. This has been going on for quite some time. Has anything changed now? Javea's prospects look bleak. The 21st century began with a large-scale fight against illegal logging. The world community, concerned about the death of the tropical forest, put pressure on the government. The settlers were evicted and very severely fined, and it helped. From 2004 to 2012, the scale of felling decreased by 83.5%. The problem lay in the social sector. Society did not see how nature was reborn but it saw the fall of the rulers. In 2014, a corruption scandal erupted and an outsider, Bolsonaro, came to power. From the moment of accession, he began to attack all initiatives aimed at reduced logging and severe punishment for poachers. Satellite imagery says deforestation has accelerated by 92% since his inauguration. Bolsonaro blocked Obama's operation to stop the Rondonia loggers sacked 21 agency heads and created a new clemency authority after imposing a fine for illegal land grabbing and forest burning. This was supposed to come to an end in 2019, when the number of forest fires in August exceeded 46,000. Bolsonaro denied everything and fired the head of Brazil's space agency for leaking data. He showed off accelerated development but after pressure from the Group of Seven, sent combat units to fight fires. However, representatives of the local agricultural sector have taken an aggressive stance regarding interference in the affairs of the region and are pushing Bolsonaro's position as long as he remains with huge money and, so to say, clean hands. The billions of trees that have disappeared have changed the natural balance. Droughts and floods happen more often. The dry season adds six days in ten years to its piggy bank and the above-mentioned carbon dioxide bank emits tons of poisonous gas into the atmosphere. If the policy of the country's leadership aimed at the destruction of the Amazon does not change, then with 25% of the lost forest, the consequences for the environment will become irreversible. Everyone from the president to the lumberjack needs to understand, in the crucible of this ancient forest, Ruthless colonization is combined with environmental vandalism, as well as climate warming creating a crisis.
If things continue as they are now, the Amazon will disappear in a few generations, with dire consequences for all life on Earth.